Hello everyone. In the last video, we have seen about the types of tonometry. In this video, we'll be seeing about Goldman Applination Tonometer, which includes definition of Goldman Applination Tonometer, principle, procedure, interpretation, and source of error. Applination Tonometer Applination tonometer are used to measure force necessary to flatten a small, standard area of cornea. It is considered as gold standard of IOP measurement due to its accuracy and also it is used widely. It is introduced by Goldman in 1954, hence it is called Goldman Applination Tonometer. Principle Goldman Applination Tonometer is based on input fix law. It states that the pressure inside a sphere is equal to the force required to flatten its surface divided by the area of flattening, that is, P equals F by A. But the ideal sphere is dry, thin walled, and flexible. Cornea is not an ideal sphere. Two extra forces acting on cornea are capillary attraction of tear meniscus and corneal rigidity. With this formula, it is determined that if the area of application is 7.35 mm, then these two forces cancel each other. But in Goldman application tonometer, area of application is only 3.06 mm. Thus, modified invert fix law, that is, P equals F by A becomes P equals F plus T minus C by A. Parts of Goldman application tonometer, which consists of biprism, feeder arm, housing, adjusting knob, and this is to connect with the slit lamp. Procedure of Goldman Applination Tonometer Prerequisites Patient is asked not to drink alcohol-based beverage or large amount of fluid within two hours as these can alter the normal intraocular pressure. Room illumination should be dim light condition. Surface anesthetic drop, that is 0.5% pro barricane. Fluorescent strip, cleaned gat tip, tension knob at 1 and not at 0, slate lamp setup, cobalt blue illumination, and angle between illumination and microscope approximately 60 degree. Instill the local anesthesia drop and fluorescent. Patient is made to sit in front of the slit lamp and the cornea and by prism are illuminated with the cobalt blue light from slit lamp. Ask the patient to look straight ahead, open both eyes wide and keep perfectly still. Move the tonometer forward until the two fluorescent semicircles in prism head are seen. The correct endpoint is when inner edge of the two fluorescent semicircles images just touch. Reading obtained in grams is multiplied by 10 to give IOP in millimeter of mercury. At least 3 readings should be taken and its variation should not be more than 1 mmHg. Interpretation Gap between the outer edge of both myers because the pressure applied by GAT is less than the eye and its correction is to increase GAT pressure by moving the knob clockwise. Gap between inner border of both myers if the pressure applied by GAT is more than the eye and it is corrected by decreasing GAT pressure by moving the knob anticlockwise. Fluorescent rings are too wide. That is because the measuring elements were not dried after cleaning or eyelids come into contact with the measuring elements. The correction is to withdraw the slit lamp and dry the measuring elements with the cotton swab. 
fluorescent rings are too thin, that is because the tear fluid is dried during the longer measuring time period. Its correction is to let the patient blink once or twice, then repeat the measuring procedure. Different size of Myers displaced up or down is because the position of slit lamp is higher or lower than the patient's eye and its correction is to level the slit lamp until both fluorescent strips are of equal size. Source of error Falsely low IOP when the fluorescent is too little, thin cornea, corneal edema and four diopter off with the rule astigmatism will lead to decrease in IOP of 1 mm Hg. Falsely high IOP When there is too much fluorescent, thick cornea, steep cornea, and four diopter off against the rule astigmatism will lead to increase in IOP of 1 mm Hg. 3 diopter increase in corneal curvature leads to increase in 1 mm Hg of IOP. GAD gives accurate readings when central corneal thickness is around 550 micron. We need to add 0.7 mm Hg for each 10 micron increased central corneal thickness and vice versa. Thank you and stay tuned with Smart Optometry for more videos.